Hello everyone, I'm Stephen and this is Audio Nautica and welcome to 1982. A friend has invited you around to show off the latest whiz-bang piece of gear. A new reel-to-reel -reel player perhaps? A super duper turntable? What could it be? But before we answer that question, let's situate ourselves historically. It's only 13 years ago that man went to the moon. Now we think in 2022 that 1969 is a long time ago. But 13 years ago from now was 2009. And that gives a little perspective on how going to the moon was essentially still a contemporary event. So in 1969, man goes to the moon. And one invention made the space race possible, the transistor. Fundamental to electronics is the ability to control current flow. Before the transistor, the vacuum tube was used. However, its large size, high power consumption, and the generation of lots of heat meant that there was just no way that vacuum tubes were going to space. However, complex operations still meant thousands of transistors. What was needed was a way to group a number of transistors together into the one device, rather than having to connect them separately. What we could call the first modern integrated circuit was invented in 1959, and NASA was an early adopter. In 1972, the first digital wristwatch, the Hamilton Pulsar P1, was released. It sold for $2,100 US dollars. All it did was tell the time. But demonstrating just how futuristic the idea of a digital watch was, James Bond wore a Pulsar P1 in 1973's Live and Let Die. Casio's first digital watch, the Casiotron, was released in 1974. By the 1980s, wearing a digital watch on your wrist was to say that you'd arrived in the digital age. All the kids wanted one. I know, I was one. 1981 saw the release of the IBM PC. These were a break away from the large mainframe computers of the time. However, whilst intended for personal use, they were still targeted at business use, and it would be a few years before computers began to find their way into homes on a broad scale. For many 80s kids, their first computer would look more like this. Of course, the other piece of high-end digital technology that might be found around the home was a calculator. Again, Casio was famous for these. Many kids went to school with the Casio FX82B, and I still have my FX100D that replaced my FX82B. Remember, in 1982, there was no such thing as multimedia. A personal music device meant a transistor radio. In 1982, a lot of people still didn't have FM radio, especially if you lived in the country. Television was in mono. By the late 70s, the VCR was becoming popular, and it was a pretty amazing piece of technology for the day. But remember, it was still all analogue, and there wasn't the crossover between mediums that there is now. You watch TV to watch TV, not to listen to music. So the only way that you could listen to what you wanted to listen to, on demand, in stereo, was to buy a recording, either on a cassette tape or a record. And whilst these mediums can sound good, they can also sound pretty terrible. And if you were a poor teenager who listened to their favourite record on a cheap turntable, well, your record wore out. And tapes had hiss and they stretched and wore out too. Now, of course, it wasn't poor teenagers who bought CDs when they came out, but you get the idea. So you can just imagine the impact in 1982, when for most people, the most advanced piece of digital technology they owned was a wristwatch, or perhaps a calculator. All of a sudden, here's a device that they can plug into the amplifier that they already own, and will play around an hour of true, high fidelity stereo music that sounds far better than anything they've ever heard in a home environment before, and theoretically, keep doing that forever. 
Now, Hi-Fi had been promising a lot for at least a decade, but now, with the CD, Hi-Fi could finally live up to its promises in the home. So, you go around to your friend's place, and what he shows you is this. You don't know what to think. You've never seen anything like this before. Well, you have, on sci-fi shows, Star Trek and the like, but never for real. Yet, there it is. And then, your friend turns it on. You see a display start to glow. You've never seen anything like this before either. Then he presses a button. And a drawer magically comes out of the front. You almost fall off your chair. Remember, this is robotics, servo motors. No one's ever seen anything like this in a home, except perhaps in a VCR. But then in a VCR, it's all kind of hidden away. Then your friend tells you it has a laser inside of it. You almost fall off your chair again. A laser? How can a home device possibly have a laser in it? What is this, Star Wars? Then he shows you a small at least compared to the records you have at home. A small, shiny, silver disc. It almost looks alien the way it reflects the light. You can see magical rainbows on one side and wonder for a second if you're tripping. Nah. Your friend puts the almost hypnotic disc into the drawer and presses the button again. The drawer closes, taking the disc with it. You hear a soft whirring sound, and the display changes. Your friend hits play. And within a second, you hear music. Sweet, glorious music, like the best sounding record you ever heard, but without a single snap, crackle or pop. Digital music has arrived. So I just can't stress what a big deal this little device, the CDP-101, was 40 years ago. It really was the beginning for most people of the digital era in the home. As a technological leap, it was just amazing, not just terms, in terms of a leap from analog to digital, but in the electronics that was required to make it work. The amount of electronics jammed into the CDP-101 is amazing. For a consumer product, that's even more amazing. A commercially mass-produced laser assembly for domestic use that would work reliably and without needing adjustment for decades, that's phenomenal. In some senses, it's a shame that we don't seem to experience engineering leaps anymore like the CD player was. A product that was just so amazing and so inconceivable that no one could have imagined a product like this in the home until they actually saw one. We don't think that much of the humble CD player these days. But 40 years on, let's not forget that much of the digital age is owed to this invention.